Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the combi mode stitch on your machine, the uh, 5 series and up, so that goes up through the 8 series machine, so 5, 7, and 8, to make word combinations. So we'll start off with making a single word, like in my little homemade tag here, and then we'll do a combination like this. Um, it's really easy and uh, it'll show you, I can show you how to make it automatically stop, how to group the different words, and really make some cute little labels for any of your crafted projects. Let's get started. So here's some examples of what we're going to do. This is probably one of our most frequently asked questions on what to do. So I have a little bit of a cotton and linen blend. This is Essex linen here that I'm going to make my labels. And then some of the things that I'm using to make this a little bit nicer is I've backed my linen with the OESD fusible woven. Now this is just a fusible um, material that just helps add some substan substance to the material. I also have um, put some Mary Ellen's Best Press, this is a very, very light starch, in my Nifty Notions squirt bottle here. And this is not just a squirt bottle, this little guy mists really lightly. So when it distributes the Mary Ellen's Press, it gets a nice misty, um, coverage so that I don't just get like a gump in one spot. So those are some of the things that we're working with. And um, I'm using a Bernina 770 today. And this Bernina 770 has been upgraded to the plus features. So let's look at uh, how these stitch out and how we program the machine because it is super easy. In order to do any kind of combination words, you want to first open up your combi modes, and that's that plus sign right there on your screen. And so now this should be blank, and then you're going to select the lettering. And I um, used a new font that's available. It's not in my simulator that I'm using, but it doesn't matter. You can pick the font that you want to pick, and let's just go ahead and go with this one. And then if you expand your stitches like this, you can write and see what you're doing a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and write H, and then we're gonna scroll down here to find our lowercase letters. O, M, E, M, A, D, B. I'm gonna collapse my stitches again, and now I'm gonna open up my eye. Now, the key to being able to stitch this so that you can just stitch away and not and know that the machine is going to stop exactly when you need it to is to go over here to the group button so we're going to select this and you can see how all of these are going to turn blue and then you use the pattern repeat and we put that at one and now when we stitch this out it's going to write homemade and then stop after the last e in homemade. Otherwise, if we don't have this selected, whatever's blue, if we press our pattern end button, which is over here, it's going to stop after. So we have to anticipate when we get down to the E to press this button, and I always forget, and then the machine just runs away saying homemade, 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 homemade. So the secret sauce is selecting this button and our pattern repeat for just one time. So I've got the 20D foot on. I like it because it's open toe and I can see exactly where I'm going. And I'm just gonna start in a little bit on my linen piece and I'm gonna drop my presser foot down. And then what I have, you saw me create the homemade with the capital H and then the lowercase O-M-E-M-A-D-E, -E, right? And so what I did is I just selected that group icon and then my pattern limitation. So now all I need to do is stitch. Now I can either use my foot control or I can use my stop start button. Either way, the machine really does a really good job of feeding. So I feel pretty confident using either button. So now I've come to the stopping point and I'm going to cut. 
So there's our homemade. I think it looks really cute. I'm just gonna use my little scissors here to trim. And so now I can just trim this up and sew this wherever I need a label. Now, of course, I can add more personalization to this and I can uh, I could write my name, I could do things like that. But if you simply wanna write a name, maybe you wanna write like someone's name, like Mary or Caitlin or something like that, then all you would do is you would type that in. And um, I also use this technique for a lot of my sheets and bed linen. So I have a dust ruffle, I have many dust ruffles, and some of them are for twin, because I have a day bed. Some of them are for a double um, size mattress and things like that. So even if it's a sheet, a top sheet particularly, I actually use these to label my sheets. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write twin in um, another font and add that to my piece. And I'm gonna use the same technique. Okay, so we're gonna come back to this one later. So I wanna save it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close and then use my heart folder and this little arrow jumping into a folder to save my combination. Now it's safe to select the whole thing again and delete it. So now I want to pick a new font. And the last one that you saw us use with the homemade, it was a beautiful triple stitch. Well, I don't want to get that fancy this time, so I'm going to pick the Swiss block. And this is a singular stitch. And I'm just going to write this pretty easily here. Go for my capital T or uppercase T and then my lowercase letters, which are down here, W, I, N. And now I'm going to do something a little bit special. So I'm going to sequence until my little blue T is highlighted and that little penetration part right there is above the T. And then I'm going to go over to this little section here. And I'm going to add a knot at the beginning and then a knot after the end. So now what's gonna happen with my design is I've got like a little knot at the beginning and the end so that when I stitch this out, it's not gonna come out in the wash. So for our next exercise, um, sometimes you might wanna write something that's more than one name or one word. You actually might want to um, write like an address or you might want to make like a tiny little quilt label or something like that. So let's have a look at how we can use some of the other features in our combi mode to really be a little bit more fancy. Now that I'm done with this one, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything again and delete it. And now let's go back and retrieve that combination by selecting our heart. And now this second folder section down here, that's retrieving a combi mode stitch. And there's my homemade. And look, it remembered everything just the way we stitched it out. So what I'm gonna do is go over here and cycle through until there's nothing active in here. And then I am gonna go ahead and get out of that mode. And I'm going to scroll down until I'm at the end of my E. So now this time, I'm going to work with this little icon here. We noticed that this one with just the three squares, that one is actually like group. So you're working with everything that you've brought into your combi mode in one unit. But this one allows you to work in sections. So let's talk about what each of these things do. Now this one, I'm not a particular fan of. What this does is it lets you write like different lines and then you have to manually hop over. So if we insert one of these, and we can look down here as to where it is. So one of these is now at the end of my word. If I insert one of these, it's just gonna write homemade, 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 homemade. But once something is lower than this, I have to manually touch it to go to the next line. Now that might be great for you. You can do, you know, things with that. But for this project, this is not the one that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and delete it. 
But, I, but the one that I want to use is this. So what's going to happen with this is it's going to stitch homemade. And then if I add anything else at the end, after our little jump, it's going, I can write what I want on the next line. So I do want to do that. So let's go back over here, close this out, and let's write the rest of our sentence. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick my lettering. And I want to be in my lowercase. And I'm going to write B, Y, and then I'm just going to write by me, M, E. And now I'm going to collapse this. And now as we scroll in, we can see our little, our little spacer or stop that we put there is there. So now I'm going to go to B, Y, and now the one right after the Y is the M. So now I'm going to open up my information, go to this segment tool here, and then include my middle stopper. So now as we look at this, there's another stopper after the Y, and I actually just like to add another one after me. So now let's see how this stitches out. So this one's gonna be fun. I'm gonna start a little bit in again, a little bit closer to the edge here, but all I'm gonna do is, is stitch. And then I can cut if I want to. And now the next thing it's going to do is the next in the sequence after that little spacer that we put in. So now I'm going to come in, you know, under here somewhere. And now I'm going to do the next word in the sentence. And now I can cut or I can just lift my presser foot and travel over here. And I'm actually just gonna put this over here on a diagonal and now stitch this out. And cut. And now I'm gonna trim my little threads And you can see I have a cute little label. And sometimes when I do things like this, I like to get out of my combi mode and, and all of that and find a cute little stitch just to add like a little extra. You know, I add a lot of extra to things. And, um, and so, yeah, I've got like this little XE stitch that I love. So I'm going to just stitch that just down here. All right, so I added a few little X's there just to make it look super cute. And now I have a little label. Okay, so a lot of you have asked once we make labels, how do you sew them on? Well, I'm putting this onto the back of one of my quilts. You might have seen this in my little TikTok video. This is the Sherry Guidry, um, it's a little Christmas tree quilt. So um, what I'm going to do is I fold it under my edges and I'm just going to leave it like this. And I've gotten some hundred weight silk finish thread. This is a superior product. This is their silk thread. It's really nice. So I've got it tied in a knot, single stranded. It's going to be totally invisible. And I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to take a little bite out of my label here. These are also um, John James needles, number 10, for hand sewing. I'm just gonna take a little blind hem stitch. So I'm gonna come up about an eighth of an inch. You just need to take a little bit 
of that tag there like that. I think you all know that hand sewing is not my favorite. I struggle with like thimbles and things like that. So just keep that in mind here as you laugh at me doing hand sewing. Here, around like that. Just grabbing a few threads. Now, if I were sewing this into a bag or something like that, I could sew this into the lining with the machine first, and then, um, you know, it would be, it would, you know, not be showing. I could even do like that little XY XY stitch down here and here, but I didn't want that to show through the other side on my quilt. And obviously when you're doing a quilt, you could say hand by handmade by me, but guess what? In the, you know, hundred years from now, when you hand off that quilt, nobody's gonna know who me is. So you might actually wanna put your name on there. As I'm heading into the home stretch here, I'll show you how I knot the thread. Just gotta get back to this corner where I started. Now I'm just gonna come back in, take a few stitches from my back of my quilt there. Then I'm gonna come in, take a little stitch or two out of this. Come back down here like this, come back up. And now I'm just gonna bury my thread by doing a few stitches in place. Just like that. And then I make a little loop, pull my thread through. And then bury my thread. And there's our, our little label. So how easy was that? And I'll tell you, I don't like hand sewing. I think it comes completely across on my videos. So. You know what, I am a machine expert. I can figure out how to do anything by machine. So be kind when you look at that hand sewing segment. <laughs> but anyway, if you wanna see more videos just like this one or other videos that have a little bit of humor or a little bit more serious, you know what to do. You check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's YouTube slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment and subscribe. All right, let's make a label. Let's immortalize our work. Bye-bye. <laughs>